Raiders of the Lost Ark was the first film in the Indiana Jones franchise. It was released in 1981, and one year later, it would get a video game adaptation on the Atari 2600. You control Indy in a quest to discover the Lost Ark of the Covenant. It's a top-down adventure game similar to, well, Adventure, or Sword Quest, where you wander around different rooms picking up items that can be used to uncover new areas, all the while dealing with snakes, spiders, and thieves, among others. The controls are a bit on the unique side. You use the second controller to move Dr. Jones and use your selected items, and the first controller to drop items and toggle your selected item in your inventory. Considering how limited the joystick controller is, with just the analog stick and the one button, it's understandable to go this route rather than limiting what you're capable of doing or designing an alternate controller which would cut into sales. This was a big movie Atari had licensed, so you know they were shooting for big numbers. The now famous Indiana Jones theme song plays when you first start up the game, and while the sound quality is good, they did fuck up a few notes. Oh well. The graphics are alright. It's not a lot of detail, and your whip is stupidly a single block that stops after a short distance, which is especially head-scratching when you realize that you also have a gun for a weapon. But Dr. Jones is well defined with his trademark fedora, the animation in general is smooth, and the sprites are recognizable enough, as long as you know what you're looking for. And you're gonna need some kind of context anyway, because popping this in without reading the manual, or a description in general, will leave you wandering around and dropping off cliffs without knowing what the hell to do, especially with the use of dual controllers in a one-player game. There are an assortment of items like a flute that acts as a snake repellent, weapons like a revolver which you'll also need to replenish with bullets, and keys to unlock certain doors. A lot of these items can be bought in the marketplace, or the black market which you'll need to pay one of the sheiks in the marketplace for access to, where you'll be able to buy some of the more abstract items, not to mention it's got some fucking weirdos. There are no alternate variations, but the Ark will be placed randomly in one of the maces, so even after beating the game, you'll still have to uncover its location from the map you'll find. While there's a lot of meat on this bone to sink your teeth into, there's a lot of trial and error too. Like advancing to the next screen only to discover that you've fallen off another damn cliff will surely remind you of E.T. What is it with pits and video games converted from Spielberg movies? It's also quite the drag to have your items stolen by the thief. Yeah, you can access a treasure room that has an infinite amount of money that you can buy replacement items, but it's still tedious. But while these issues can get annoying, it's still worth taking a look at how deep of a game this was for a 2600 game. There were not many like this. I mean, it's one of the few Atari games that you can actually beat. Raiders of the Lost Ark has its flaws, but it's still very playable, and you have to admire its ambition. Surely this would lead to bigger and better things as the franchise continued and the video game consoles improved. An NES Indiana Jones game was sure to be awesome, right? Right?